Senator Smith. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. It has been an absolutely heartbreaking summer. Like our brothers and sisters in the eastern states, my home state of South Australia has suffered deeply at the hands of the bushfires, some of the worst our state and our country have ever seen. The images that those of us lucky enough to escape the tragedy directly have seen streaming on our televisions and devices have been harrowing. And of course, they are nothing compared to what our communities who have lived through this devastation and tragedy have felt. And they are nothing compared to what our brave and selfless volunteers have endured and given. In South Australia, Kangaroo Island has suffered horrifically. 300,000 hectares have burned. That's an estimated 68 per cent of our beautiful island. Australia's third largest national park, Flinders Chase, on the southwest of the island, was mostly destroyed and burned. The visitor centre, which I was lucky enough to take my son to just last year, has been completely wiped out. 100,000 sheep lost, at least 25,000 other livestock as well. The purest strain of the Ligurian honeybees are found on the island. 6,000 of their beehives have been lost and a further 10,000 damaged. It will take seven years before the trees they feed on flower again. 60 homes on the island are gone, hundreds of buildings, including important tourism infrastructure. And tragically, of course, two South Australians lost their lives in the Kangaroo Island fires. Dick Lang and his son Clayton were on their way home to the family property after fighting fires for nearly two days, but they never returned. Desert Dick, as they called him, was a pioneering bush pilot and safari operator. He assisted countless travellers and tourists to explore the charm of Kangaroo Island. Clayton, his son, was one of Adelaide's leading plastic and reconstructive surgeons. His brother, Lachlan, described him as someone who was determined, light-hearted and with a strong work ethic. Their deaths are an incredible loss to the Lang family, the Kangaroo Island community and to our state as a whole. May they rest in peace. So too to Ron South of Charleston, who was sadly lost in the Cudley Creek fire. Ron has been remembered by his family as a loving and generous man with a unique and unforgettable character. He was a grandfather to six grandchildren, who will no doubt miss him immensely. Another tragic and great loss for his family, his community and our state. The Cudley Creek fire that tore through the Adelaide Hills region, including nearby Lobethal, claimed 25,000 hectares. Vineyards, farms and homes were destroyed and 500 buildings were lost. I was in Cudley Creek just last week and I was completely struck by what seemed to be just apparent randomness in what the fire took and what was spared. I saw whole structures which had survived standing next to structures which had been completely burned. And whilst the area is very much still open for business and needs our support, the evidence of the tragedy is plainly visible for everyone to see. Nationally, 33 people have lost their lives. Parents who leave little children behind. 3,000 homes have been destroyed and 10.5 million hectares burned. Of course, what these statistics can never convey is the depth and meaning in what is lost. Of course, the loss of a parent or a child, a brother or sister, a friend, a community member. Something which can never, ever be given back to those families. And the houses, houses which are people's homes. Perhaps the place they brought their child home for the first time from hospital, where they shared Christmas with family, where they've broken a sweat painting walls and hanging photographs, cooked meals for their families, got the kids ready for school. The loss of someone's home is so much more than the loss of a building. And of course, in every home, there are hundreds of valuable possessions which can't be quantified by a dollar amount, that can never be replaced by insurance, that can't be replaced by the generosity of strangers. And the other buildings lost, the hectares burned. The number of people whose livelihood went up in flames this summer Vines destroyed and damaged irreparably. Livestock killed, businesses ruined. And when you not only lose your home, but you lose your business, you lose your street, your whole community is suffering and in pain. What kind of loss is that? It's impossible to adequately describe it in this place. 
and it's impossible to adequately empathise for those of us who didn't feel it. On almost any measure, these fires have been unprecedented. The season was unprecedented. But unprecedented should never be confused with rare or one-off, because our scientists are telling us, as they have been for years, to expect more of the same. They predicted this. The severity of this season and the extreme weather that has exacerbated these conditions has resulted from our changing climate. The science on climate change is clear. Climate change is making extreme weather events more frequent and more severe. We know what causes climate change and we know what we must do to act. The devastation in my state is heart-wrenching, but we are a resilient state filled with resilient people. We will, of course, get through this. And the generosity of our community in the face of this tragedy has been absolutely awe-inspiring. As the Leader of the Opposition has said, in response to the worst of Mother Nature, we have seen the best of human nature. Of course, there is no greater generosity than the fearless service of our firefighters and volunteers. And I want to take this opportunity to put on the record my eternal gratitude to the South Australian Country Fire Service and their volunteers who battled these deadly fires in our state for months and even travelled interstate to assist others. Within our community more broadly, so many people stepped up to offer their support in whatever way they could. $250 million donated to charities. But locally, organisations like the Sant Nirankari Mission of Adelaide, who got together and delivered a truckload full of donations to Food Bank South Australia. Food Bank itself, who did a tremendous job of coordinating donations and extending support to the community with what they needed and when they needed it. Local women like Karen Flynn, who organised backpacks for bushfires and collected 4,000 backpacks for kids in need. The nurses and vets and volunteers at our animal hospitals, like the Adelaide Koala and Wildlife Hospital, which I was lucky enough to visit, whose volunteers are working tirelessly to support our injured wildlife. And of course, in South Australia, the Book Them Out campaign, an initiative of the State Government and the Tourism Commission, which I commend and am absolutely proud to support. Beyond these initiatives, we need to remember that, of course, our producers and our communities need support, not just now, but into the long term. I visited Petaluma Winery in the Adelaide Hills last week, and while some of the damage was clear, melted sheds, destroyed machinery, vines lost and burned, so much of the impact is yet to be known. We don't know how the smoke will damage the vines. We don't know what the impact will be, what can be saved, what can be produced down the track, which means for many of our producers, whom we can't necessarily see very visible damage, there will be an impact on their business and it will hit in a few years' time. So we need to make sure we remember them years into the future, not just now. And we must also make sure that we empower the people who are helping our producers, like the Australian Wine Research Institute. The best thing we can do as a community is to support our bushfire-affected areas. But the best thing we can do as a parliament is to get our policy settings right for the future, to empower our emergency services and our volunteers, to listen to the experts and to act on their advice, to act meaningfully on climate change. The road to recovery in my state will be long and difficult, but we will recover. The mental and emotional impact will last a lifetime, but the scars will fade. We will never get back those we've lost but we will always remember them, their service and their sacrifice. We can never thank our volunteers enough, but we will do everything we can to show them that we respect their sacrifice and that we know that they deserve better. Australians expect all of us in this place to do everything we can to limit this tragedy or one like it unfolding again and again, and we owe it to them to deliver better, to change.